We don't feel there's enough representation of customer success at the board level. You know, if you look at the number of CSM roles out there, there's tons. But if you look at the number of CCO roles out there, there's not that many. We wanted to speak to experts like you who have made the jump to Chief Customer Officer and find out more about your secret sauce and um, hope that you can help inspire the next round of future Chief Customer Officers. Why don't we start by you talking a little bit about Refine Labs and what you do there as Chief Customer Officer. Refine Labs is a demand accelerator for B2B SaaS companies. We have a unique methodology and philosophy that's really anchored on sort of capturing existing demand and intent channels, um, but most importantly, creating new demand in awareness channels. My role is unique at the company as Chief Customer Officer. My background has typically been in different B2B SaaS or tech marketplace companies, and so really taking everything I've learned over my 15-year career and focusing on um, designing a customer success strategy for a services business, essentially a consulting business. So what advice would you have for um, you know, CSMs or directors or VPs who are looking to become CCOs? Yeah, so I think the important thing to remember is I think for any C-level position, um, you have to be thinking like an owner. You have to be looking at the entire business as a whole and focused on solving the most important problems in the business. I took on projects in my role that were outside the scope, arguably, of my immediate mandate that I had, but those were the problems that needed to be solved in order for me to do my job well. That mindset is how you get promoted and how you get a seat at the table. Think about the customer first and think about what are the biggest problems in the business that will either unlock more revenue, that will reduce churn, that will improve the customer experience. Um, and I think a lot of people identify problems that are symptoms of like root bigger root cause problems. So it's like really understanding what the real, real issue is. Solve that root cause problem and watch all those little, little problem symptoms go away once you actually get to the root of what's going on. So we kind of talked about getting a seat at the table. What were some of the biggest challenges you had in trying to get that seat at the table? You know, I think persistence. And if you really believe that you um, should do something in particular that's going to help the business, like not being afraid to put yourself out there, um, understand if you get a no, it's not right now, ask again. So I think the, the persistence is a big one. I would say in addition to persistence, it's um, you know saying yes to opportunities that might arise, even if you're not sure that you can tackle them and dedicate yourself to figuring it out as you go. I think what I realized was even if I was gonna take on these other functions, I needed to lean into my strengths, which was really working with people, empowering, people within their functional expertise to do a great job and creating the conditions for healthy collaboration and alignment. So getting the best out of others, particularly where you don't, where that's not your bread and butter, right? Where mm -hmm. you're not the subject matter expert. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. If you're a leader, you're not going to know everything well, right? And that's okay. That's not, that's not the point of it. I love that. Well, um, Megan, you've been great. This has been so valuable. Thank you for sharing your wisdom with us. Really appreciate it. Thanks for having me.